metaverse or Mars? Uh, we don't know where meetings will take place in future. That was one of the first exchanges we had with Robin Ruskin when we, we first tried to engage her for our InnoVent session. And I'm very happy that it worked out, that we could bring her over all the way from New York. Let's hand it over to the founder of the virtual events group, Robin Ruskin. Thank you, Vivian. Thank you. Good morning. First of all, thank you to Vivian, Dr. Vivian Boone for finding me. And we had this wonderful conversation about meetings. And I want to acknowledge all of you for the work that you do. I bet you looked a lot younger before 2020 because what we had to learn in two years was really a challenge that was, we rose to. And I think everybody has fond memories of early days of virtual meetings and, and what we had to do. So um, uh, Dr. Brun is right. I was the editor of PC Magazine when Bill Gates was writing DOS. So I'm going to date myself as an old person in this industry who has seen this many times before, these radical changes. And I'm going to talk about generative AI today because that is the radical change that you will deal with in 2023 and 2024. But I thought I'd start with some really basic practical things and then move on. Um, and I'm happy to be interrupted. And I know I talk like a New York person, so at the end, I will have a QR code that mentions every product that I talk about because I will talk about a lot of products. So your comments this morning, you talked about the effect of the pandemic and the technology we were exposed to. But while we were exposed to this screen first immersive meetings, we also had another phenomena come about, and that is we had a new age of a new generation of meeting people ready to come to meetings, a younger cohort. They are more interested in being active participants they are less interested in sitting for 45 minutes listening to thank yous and introductions. They want experiences. To me, a meeting is something that is energizing. It's something that revives you. It's something that creates a year-long community. It changes your life when it's done right. And so I think the combination of these two things just makes it more imperative that we create a generation of meeting goers who don't see it as a chore, but as an honor. And I know, and I am very respectful that you have other jobs to do during the day, so that you would take time to look to the future is um, touching and most needed. So what this means, and I think you heard this in the opening comments, is that we have many meeting formats. And Part of your job is to decide the right meeting for the right time. It could be online, it could be a hybrid, it could be virtual, it could be a metaverse, um, and we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the long tail of an event. An event should not be over when we walk out of this room. The friends you made, the ideas you heard, the conversations you had should keep going. So we'll talk about how to intentionally make those moments last. Um, we'll talk about data-driven. I'm assuming all of you in this room are in the events coordination business, but maybe you're in the graphics art business. And if I knew that, if I had that information ahead of time, I could address that. So data driving our meetings. Creating a sense of presence. You've all been on the Zoom call where people could be anywhere. Their name is Jeremy or Obadiah. You have no idea where they're from. We have to get better at creating a sense of where people are virtually and understanding the rhythms of people's brains. People, in fact, have a much shorter attention span online. We've become cognizant of that, and we've tried to adapt to that. And I will say a younger generation has a very short attention span. So get your meeting points out there and in a very different cadence and rhythm. And then I'll spend time talking about new tools. So once again, my company is called the Virtual Events Group. Honest to goodness, I started it during the pandemic because I sold an events company and I sold it to the Consumer Electronics Show. 
And people started to call me and say, what do we do? How long is this going to last? How do we show our products? How do we meet? And so the virtual events group is three things. It's a big database of every tool a meeting user would ever want to use, platforms, tools, production, and generative AI. We have monthly meetings online where we talk about different parts of events. The creator economy last week, sustainability this month, generative AI in the future. And then we have a weekly newsletter that looks at the events industry. Um, and so I, I literally started this in April of 2020 when I decided I wasn't ready to just hibernate and do nothing. But I thought I'd spend a minute just on the basics because sometimes we think we know the basics, but we don't know the basics of meetings. And so I was at a UN meeting last week and I apologize if anybody in this room had something to do with the meeting. And I just want to point out just a couple of things. So in the right hand corner was the UN meeting. Now clearly you have real requirements, real procurement problems. The camera was fixed. It was a big table with one person sitting at it in real life. The speaker was nowhere in the focus of the camera. And the UN meeting screen was so high that nobody could read it. Just little adaption. So to start thinking about virtual space like physical space, what are people seeing and how does it look? And uh, this was not at 2020. This was just one week ago. So simple things that I'm sure you know. Many debates about the use of green screens because you know sometimes you get that effect where people are pixelated off of the green screen and their image breaks up. A good quality green screen and good lighting can help you um, make a big difference in using a background. Uh, sometimes I like, it depends on the meeting, sometimes I like backgrounds, sometimes I like blurred backgrounds, sometimes I like to see people in their natural habitat with their books. And a lot depends on what you want the outcome of the meeting is how you should think about that. So, but there are inexpensive loom cubes, mirror lights. I don't want to be a commercial for one particular product, but a good light is mission critical. Um, we use something at our meetings that is, and there are many like this, this is called the Owly. The Owly has 360 degree cameras and 360 degree microphones. So I can place it in the middle of the room, and as soon as somebody talks, the camera and the microphone goes to that person. The problem with the alley, if that one person is eating potato chips and chomp, chomp, chomping, <laughs> then it goes to them. So it's not a perfect device, but in a big conference where there are many people, it's really worth taking a look at something like this. There's something else I use that's kind of Again, elementary, but very powerful. The box is called a stream deck. It has buttons on it. I program the buttons to be various parts of my presentation. The movie, the PowerPoints, the introduction of the speakers. And then it triggered the action from my box. And it looks much better than Zoom, and I'll show you in a minute. Another one that just came out recently is called Cinemaker. It does the same thing, but without the box, just software. This is that same idea, but with software only. Cinebaker, I can drive this whole thing from an iPad. Every person on my stage would have a phone next to them. And that phone is their screen, and I can control it from a camera. Again, it just makes it look better than a bunch of windows that are Zoom. Zoom also, like nobody ever looks at the millions of menus around Zoom, but there are so many things you can add in. Um, you can exchange business cards. There's an application called Warmly. So right away, you're not just Jeremy on the screen anymore. You have a title, you have a name. You can send that information to somebody else. You can do networking activities, whether you want to let people randomly network or you want to let Uganda network with Tunisia and just pick people to network. Twine is an add-on to Zoom, like an app that we use all the time, that you add in and lets you specify how people will have meetings. A little bit better than a breakout session because it's a little more intentional. 
You can annotate and snip a Zoom video using something called Grain. And I'm gonna show you Otter AI in a minute because I think it's really important. How many of you in this room use Otter AI? Okay, okay. So to me, this is the lifesaver. It is your note taker. You sit there in a Zoom call, normally somebody would be scribing something or writing something. Otter sits there like a window in your Zoom call and takes notes for you. You can edit them afterwards, you can send people just the headlines, you can send them the whole meeting, you can share the meeting, archive the meeting. It even knows enough to kind of guess, it's not always right, about the subtitles within your meeting. So it's artificial intelligence, it has the smarts to know, not generative AI, which is very different, artificial intelligence that detects the topics of conversation that you are talking about. It's free unless you use it like forever, all the time, and then you pay something for it. And there are many others like it, but it's one that I like. So that's just basic Zoom, like maybe things you didn't know. Now I'm gonna switch and talk a little bit about the pre-show. You're gonna have a meeting. You want people to come to the meeting. You want them to be prepared. What can you do? So Google Forms, also pretty simple. Three simple questions. Why are you coming to this meeting? What do you want to get out of it? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Something that helps you as the meeting organizer uh, tell the um, person who's speaking, here's who's attending your meeting. Because oftentimes, you just don't know. Last week, I was at South by Southwest, and I did a meeting in Austin where I made my panelists stand at the door, and we greeted everybody. We said, hello, why are you here today? And then we knew there were a lot of Brazilians in the room and a lot of Germans in the room. And we had a singer, so I said to the singer, can you sing a song that everybody knows, not just an American song? And so I had the knowledge beforehand with some simple tactics. Social media, super effective to get your meeting across and publicized. I use something called Hootsuite because there are many social media, and unfortunately, you want to be on many of them. So I use LinkedIn, I use Twitter, I use Facebook, I use Instagram, and I can use it all from Hootsuite. Hootsuite's smart enough to size the images for the right uh, social media and let me craft the message just by changing the hashtags because they all work a little differently. And then I can schedule the whole week's social media in advance which is incredibly useful and time-saving. And again, there are many other products like this. Copy.ai, again, uses artificial intelligence to write your copy. Could be a blog, could be a social media post, could be a letter to your speakers saying, show up at nine o'clock in this room, this is what you should wear, this is what you should bring. You specify the prompts. We're having a meeting at 10 o'clock. You should be in this room. It's, um, and give it the information, and it will generate the copy. Again, it's free to try out. There are other things like it. But it's, um, it's a lifesaver. When you think as a meeting planner how much time you spend doing so many silly, repetitive tasks, things like this can make a big difference. Everybody's heard of Dolly 2. So Dolly 2 is a generative AI image creator. I can give it a prompt like, draw a woman in an evening gown walking up the stairs in the style of Monet, and it will draw it. I happen to just ask it, what does the UN look like so that I could have a mental image of where I would be sitting, of what the room would look like? So if you're haven't seen a vendor or a supplier or you haven't been to a venue, Dolly can tell you a lot about what you're going to see. Again, free to use unless you go over a certain limit and it's really as easy as speaking English but you'll find that your skills as a prompter of AI will get better the more you use it. You'll be more sp specific. Um, it's almost like writing a Zen koan. You, the, the more precise you can be in describing the scene you want to see, let's say you say, I want a logo, 
for InnoVent. I want it to be red and green and pink, and I want it from run to end. It will invent something for you, it may not be perfect, but it will give you a starting board. So that's sort of things leading up to the meeting. We'll move right to the meeting. And I know your neighbors right down the block here. How many of you are familiar with the ITU? They are a UN entity. I don't know if anybody represents ITU here, uh, but they sort of have their own little world. And I wanted to show you something that I think they do that is so clever. This woman on the lower right-hand corner, she's not real, she's digital, she's synthetic. She has a voice that they just typed in and gave her a voice and a look. And I will play a minute of this video. The AI for Good Neural Network, a networking community platform powered by artificial intelligence. My name is Anna, the AI for Good Neural Network avatar. Welcome to the lobby. To begin building your neural network connections, take the AI smart matching quiz. Simply select how you prefer to learn, build, and connect to find your smart matches. So the idea, and it's really amazing, so the people at ITU said to me, we used to have to get up and put on a suit and tie every day and say the same thing every day. We built one synthetic human, and they use a program called Synthesia, which is in my notes, and she does all the work for them every day, and they have a lot of meetings. More interesting, or equally interesting, is the neural network that they have running this. So, they ask me when I sign in, which SDG am I interested in? What do I do for a living? And they make matches with people like me in my network. So I already don't get a lot of junk information from them. I only get information about events I might care about, and I know who else will be at the event. So I've created a community online through the repetition. The more I use it, the smarter it gets about me. So I thought they did a particularly good job of combining synthetic humans, neural networking, artificial intelligence, and some prompting about what they do. I probably did a less good job. I also made a synthetic human. I decided not to make it look real. Um, because we're the virtual events group, we're the veg group, which means vegetables, and I made, um, I used DID, and you can play one minute of this. Hi, you found us, at least virtually. The virtual events group was born during the pandemic to help all stakeholders, marketers, associations. Artificial intelligence put the image in based on my language. If I said COVID, a picture of COVID comes up. So you can stop, it's a, basically a commercial about how our, how our group works, but everything was done synthetically. The human is not a human, it is a synthetic human. The words were, I actually used my own voice, which was deliberate, and you will make these decisions. Your own voice, somebody else's voice, and then I uh, picked images based on AI's library of images. So you can stop that movie now. So very similar, another sense of place that's pretty easy, just a background image. Knowing where your delegate is from, having a sense of place and setting, I think is really useful and gives you some context that we often miss. And I don't, to go back to Zoom for a moment, how many of you have ever seen Zoom's immersive mode? So if you put up Zoom and you look in the right-hand corner, it says view, and one of the views is immersive mode, and you have a choice of an auditorium or a classroom or a dais-like table. I'm not saying you have to use it, but it is different. I did this with my husband as a test to show that any idiot can do this very easily, and the host has to set this up, and your guests pop in. It is different. It wakes them up a little bit, to see this new type of setting. And then I wanted to show you something else that's really important. We talked about the long tail of events. So we talked a little bit about the pre-show and we talked a little bit about your meeting. Now, you've now listened to me for 45 minutes, talk on and on. Nobody wants to hear me for 45 minutes. So what do we do? Can we play this video to show how one company 
a global woman-owned events agency. For 25 years, we have produced some of the world's largest conferences on our MetaMeetings platform. We use the same MetaMeetings platform to extend the impact of our social good conferences, the Global Summit of Women, Capital as a Force for Good, and most recently, the Global Green Inclusive Innovation Summit at the UN. First, we built a content-rich and interactive MetaMeetings website and captured the video of the G2I2 Summit from the UN TV webcast. Then, the videos were optimized via machine learning by our partner, GIST. And the video snippets were posted onto the G2I2 LinkedIn page. We tagged the speakers, especially those who had large networks. Over 90 users reverted back to the G2I2 MetaMeetings website from LinkedIn to learn more. In two weeks, we gained 200 followers on LinkedIn with no paid posting. Our built-in G2I2 LinkedIn community is always ready to engage for our next summit. Video is the most powerful tool in your marketing wheelhouse. Because video content builds communities. Communities create change. So to say, um, like video, as the tape said, most important thing that will come out of this, not everybody who needs to see this is here. We can amplify this. Not everybody has an hour to go watch something, nor will they spend it in front of their screens, but we can take the highlighted snippets and use them. Another example of a sense of presence is called Room 3D. Same idea, they use cutouts of your video to place them in a cinematic background. It can be an auditorium, it can be a cafe in Paris. They have thousands of different backgrounds that you can use, which works out really effectively to surprise people. Okay, those are existing spaces. I wanna talk about some of the emerging spaces that you may be wrestling with as you talk about meetings in the future. This is a company called Engages, and this is a map of the Hong Kong Wealth Management Office. Not everybody can go to Hong Kong to visit with their wealth manager, so they built this. It has rooms, and you go in as an avatar of yourself, um, mostly in this case, as, as real video, and you can have a meeting room, you can have a private wealth conference room, you can navigate this space with your with the keys on your keyboard, you do not need headsets. It's just a 3D representation of a digital world that makes it easy to go from room to room. So useful for a place like the one we're in right now. How many of you have heard of the Sandbox or Decentraland? You know, if you have Ethereum coin, you can buy a piece of land. And if you knew uh, not only does Snoop Dogg own land here, but uh, PwC, KPMG, banks, uh, art museums. You build your land, and just to give you the basics, you build your land using something like Unity and 3D shapes and a database behind them, and people can come experiment in your land. If you go to Decentraland, stores have their own areas. Walmart has an amusement park. Forever 21 has a, um, a game that kids can play and be shopkeepers. So it's a way to experiment. Imagine this library in that setting. Imagine being able to walk through a world and meet people um, dressed as avatars of whoever you'd like to be, uh, the Rockefellers or the Wilsons, and go and meet people. Other campuses do the same thing, and I'll just play one second of this video because it'll give you an idea. This is Verbella. You can open up a corporate headquarters in Verbella, and I just want you to see what it looks like. Again, totally imagined. Not only do they have corporate offices, but they have uh, ping pong areas, they have a beach, they have a disco club. So they're trying to build a world where you can do your business, but you can also socialize and meet people there and have trade shows there, and have job fairs there. And again, if I had to give you advice, I would say spend 10% of your daily days looking at the future, and 90% looking at the present, because, um, um, but I can also assure you this is not so hard to build as, you would, as, as it might seem. So um, 
really, and not to be materialistic, but take, this is Fortnite. Ariana Grande did a comfort, uh, concert. You all got to dress up in your avatars, and people spent, kids in particular, a lot of money on their avatar costumes digitally to go to this event in Fortnite. 78 million people showed up for her concert, more than could hold in any garden anywhere, and more than $20 million of merchandise were sold. So when you look at the potential, I know, to sell UN t-shirts, I mean, you actually have these things, and people played, and they got to meet with their friends. There are complications still, it gets complicated, but there are instances. Only so many people can fit in an instance in a virtual world. So if you went with your friend, you might never see your friend again. But it is good to know that this is there. Another one that the kids are growing up on, and if you have kids, you know this, is Roblox. Roblox not only creates games that you can play, but lets kids create their own games. You can create a lemonade stand. You can create a business. This one happened to be a fashion show. Burberry is there. Um, uh, Tommy Hilfinger is there. You can actually buy clothes for your avatar and then go to the store and buy the same clothes for yourself. So it is happening today and it is real. Google. Google is super into the future of events. So last week in New York, two weeks ago, they had something called Google XI to, again, experiment with participatory interactive experiences. Google, one of the things that they uh, believe in is people of different neural abilities go to events. So they have um, a whole neurodivergent program with fidgeters uh, for people who get anxious, with people who don't want bright lights, with people who need spaces to go away. They are designing these spaces into their rooms, very cognizant of the fact that different types of people go to meetings for different reasons. And they have quite a lot of resources online. Um, universities. And I'm just going to play this in the background. Uh, this is a meta university. Already 35 American campuses look like this. You can go to chemistry class. This does require goggles. They uh, use Oculus, but um, it's still a lot less expensive than an American college. You can go to labs. You can go to history classes. Uh, you can partake in all sorts of things without being physically there. And they have um, done what is called, and this should be important to you, a digital twin of the campus. It means an exact replica digitally of that campus. So we, I just have to show you the chemistry lab because it's so much fun. But um, uh, the studies, the academic studies coming out do show fairly high retention of academic material, although the information remains you know, to be seen um, because it really does reflect on the future of universities. This is nowhere. I only point it out because it's called the listening party. So the DJ or whoever he is is on the stage, but it uses something called audio proximity. So I could stand next to you and just whisper to you in the digital world and nobody else in that room could hear me. So I can move through the digital world. Let's say you want to talk to the whisper to the person next to you. It's possible now, thanks to what's called audio proximity. Digital twins. This is a virtual office. OK, it's a picture of a virtual office. I can find my way through the maze. And I know we're going to do some of that today. But if I attach sensors, IoT sensors, I can now see who left the lights on? What's the temperature in the room? Where is the traffic pattern? How can I reduce the carbon footprint of this building? Uh, where is there too little parking? Where is there too much parking? So as we start to build digital twins of our environments, uh, we're, we're seeing so many amazing things happen. And if you take that to the end of that conversation, this is Singapore. They have a digital twin. You can book your telehealth appointment there. You can get your driver's license renewed there, so you don't have to go wait online. You just send your avatar. You can see the traffic patterns in the city and maybe change them 
at different times of the day to change traffic. So again, it's the virtual world becomes a digital twin of the real world, but becomes a two-way conversation. And the things that can happen are pretty amazing or pretty crazy, and we'll get into that in a minute. So the one thing to remember, because you'll hear this a lot in conversations about the metaverse, these worlds are persistent, which just means you can go away and the world will still be there when you get back, just like you left it. Another question you'll hear a lot is interoperability. If I'm going to buy a nice dress in Decentraland, can I bring it with me to Sandbox? Right now you can't, and it's a really big interoperable issue uh, in, in the kids' world. Um, and there she is wearing goggles. And I do believe there is a place for goggles, and I'll address that in a minute. Um, and in particular, there is nothing better to teach empathy, to teach what a true situation is, to put you out of this world and into another, but it is not a requirement for a meeting unless you, let's just say, really wanted people to experience what famine was like somewhere or what was really going on in Ukraine. Then I think VR is so powerful, but expensive, and I'll show you some of the, um, here I um, some of the, the cons. It is expensive, they are cumbersome, they almost have to be adjusted for each person. They create nausea and motion sickness. But when it comes to leaving one world, and um, I have to say my mother is 92, and so her world has gotten a lot smaller, her physical world, but she can go to Japan and she can go to the opera. She can only go for 10 minutes at a time because she starts to go a little crazy. But this is the future we will all experience, and I think it will make us all better humans. Um, one last bit about AI. So there's, if you just, there's a site called Futurepedia, and it lists all the AI programs. This one is called You, and I happen to like You because it does everything in one place. Images, video, movies. I just asked it, show me a picture of people outside the Palais, and that's what it gave me back. So, to, again, to get quick ideas for things, it doesn't have to be ChatGPT. Um, this is very simple to use and very powerful. Um, people tell me, oh, students are gonna get so stupid, they're not learning anything, they're just gonna regurgitate things, but they're gonna have a different kind of smarts. They're gonna be critical about what's real and what's not real, and in this case, they're learning art history. I mean, they actually, I have seen kids sit down and say, show me cubism, show me pointillism, make me a picture that looks like a Van Gogh. And they're really, they're using architectural terms. So I'm very optimistic that there is a future here and that um, whether I'm optimistic or not, Gartner pre predicts that 30% of all the ads you see will be generated by AI in 2025. This is a tool I love. I go through lots of video interviews, and this is called Descript. It literally takes the video, it ingests it, it turns it into words. I edit those words just like I would edit a word processing document, so I get rid of all the ums and all the ahas and all the pauses, and then I just take the most important parts. And then I cut the whole thing down, just in words, and the video matches. And then I put a cover on it. And then I have a one minute clip of everything that I deemed was important, ready to go out on the, inter uh, on the internet. And uh, again, for people that only have time to hear the top line, what went on today, there is no easier tool. This takes hours of somebody's time and a few minutes of a computer's time. ChatGPT, everybody has played with it? You must. Keep playing with it while it's free because it costs them a lot of money for these computations. Um, it programs code. It creates invitations, posters, art, term papers, letters of recommendation. They're not perfect. That's what you have to remember. For now, they still need, they still need humans probably more than ever to distinguish what is true. Um, keep your eyes on Meta. 
I won't comment on what they're doing because it changes from day to day, what Facebook's big plan is for uh, the metaverse. And initially, it did involve goggles. I think that's going to go away uh, quickly. And then I want to scare you a little bit by talking about data-driven things. So um, this is called Zenus, and it's out on the market now. They use it in trade shows. There's a difference between facial recognition, it's like, I know you're Robin, and facial analysis, which I know you're a female who's, I won't say how old, but this is what I know about you. So sentiment analysis is already used at a lot of trade shows you go to, where it says, I can tell this person's between 30 and 40, I can tell they're a male, female, or a binary, and I also know if they're engaged, happy, or unhappy. It's here, it's out there. Uh, the jury's very controversial about how it will be used in restaurants, in shopping, and in meetings to change the flow. But it can tell you, well, most people go there at two o'clock. That's when I should have more staff there. And, and finally, as we walk through the library tour this morning, I don't know how many of you took it, I just thought about how wonderful it would be as a virtual journey and a game where you learned something and it was open to the public where you saw the history of a place like this turned into a journey. So for those of you who missed three quarters of the names I rolled out, that is the code that will create a one sheet PDF of every program that I named and hopefully lead you to others like that. So if you Thanks much for, that you, was a lot of information yeah, for us you got to digest and, and take in. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. And take in. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much.